wrapping up the Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 uh, GM game stream. This is going to be the last stream that we do for the 2020 version. Uh, for any of you guys that follow uh, the stream or Draft Day Sports in general or whatever, and you also happen to live in a cave and not communicate with the rest of the world, uh, the 2021 college basketball game is right now in first access. It's available. Uh, run, don't walk, run to Wolverine Studios' website. Uh, sign up for the first access. Check it out. It's amazing. I've already done a GM Games first look video. Uh, that should be up on the YouTube. So if you haven't seen it yet and you just want to kind of get a feel for what's changed, what kind of new features you're going to be getting, uh, jump in there and check it out. Keep in mind, it is a first access, so things are still changing. Uh, even the game that I previewed a couple of days ago, there have been some changes since then. So uh, keep that in mind. But 2021 is coming. A new save is coming. Uh, all that is on the way. So I figured tonight... We've got to uh, we got to review what we've already done. So let me get the device up and going as always. Whoop. Looking for the chat. Waiting for the chat and the green dot and all the good stuff to hit over here. I assume we're going. Let's see what we got. All right. I'm going to assume we're good, but I can't get into chat for some reason. Ah, I see the dot now. Ah, I see it. I think we're good. There we go. Chat is up. We're in. I've been live for two minutes. Sitting here fiddling around with nothing. Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, it's a... It's a stream in review tonight. We're going back. We're not. We're not going to simulate anything new. Uh, you can see here. I never even got through this last off season. I didn't touch it. First access dropped, and I, I went straight to it. I've been having a blast with that. Uh, already ready to crack some skulls in the CBGM. Hope to see all you guys over there. But uh, let's let's take a little little stroll through what we did here. April of 2045. Any of you guys that were with me the whole way, uh, that's what, 25, 26 seasons? We did quite a bit with the 2020 version of the game, and honestly, I hope to do even more with 2021, so uh, you know, we'll jump in and get that started just as soon as the full version releases, and you know, we know that it'll be stable and all that good stuff. I do have to say the version that's already out is fairly stable, but... Uh, I think the first thing we should take a look at is probably our office, right? Our overall, like what we did as a coach. And guys, if there's stuff you all want to see, uh, obviously people are going to be jumping into the stream at different times. Uh, maybe haven't seen some of the information that's that, that I'm going to go through. So just shout out and chat what you want to see. Uh, we're going to go back, take a look at all the different schools that we coached, uh, all that fun stuff. But uh, first, let's see what we got here. So we got 26 years in as a head coach. Um, I must have started this coach off at 30 years old. Uh, so we went 578 and 308 overall. It's not quite winning 66 percent, you know, two thirds of the time. Uh, six conference championships. I believe a lot of those were here at Louisville. Um, one postseason championship. When did we win a postseason championship? We'll have to go back and look. Let's let's get in here a little bit closer, see if it doesn't tell us a little bit more about that. Ah, uh, it was a CBI tournament. So we never won the NCAA tournament. We never won an NIT tournament. We did apparently win one CBI tournament. That must have been long ago because I've already completely forgotten about it. Um, I don't think we went to a CBI with Louisville. Although we'll find out when we start going school by school and record by record. But anyway, so 26 years, we made 14 NCAA tournaments, one NIT, three CBIs, won the CBI once. Out of those 14 appearances in the NCAA, what's up, Breeze? Glad to have you, buddy. 
out of 14 times in the NCAA, we made the Sweet 16 11 times. That means we only got knocked out in the first or second round three times. That's not too shabby. What's up, Agalia? Glad to have you, buddy. Uh, arrived to tell me how bad I am. You know, I only made 14 NCAA tournaments in 26 years, so and you figure we went Florida A&M, Tulane, Nebraska, Auburn, Louisville. So we rebuilt five programs, missed out on 12 NCAA tournaments. Uh, it's not terrible. It's not wonderful. What's up, America? New to the stream. Glad to have you, man. Uh, feel bad that your first stream is just uh, a stream and review here. We're not going to sim any new games tonight. But is he as bad as Isaiah Thomas back with the Knicks? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, but anyway, this is just going to be a review of 2020, and then once the the full version of 21 drops, I'll start streaming it. I don't feel like it's real fair to the devs to uh, to stream before they've got their final product out. Uh, but uh, we'll see. It's it's awfully stable. I might get a little bit frisky next week, but for this week, uh, stream interview. Anyway, back to the stats. 14 NCAA tournaments, 11 Sweet 16s. That's a pretty good record. And then we made this the final four three times. So basically, I mean, that's a little bit better than one out of five. If we made the tournament, there was a 20% chance we were making the final four. Not too shabby. 16-20 win seasons. Conference Coach of the Year six times. Never did get to be National Coach of the Year. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to check out all of that, Agalia. Oh, yeah, yeah, Blaze. I'm definitely ready for College Basketball 21. I've been playing the first access like crazy. I'm loving it so far. Uh, make sure you're checking out the, the GM Games Discord for my progress on there because I've been posting it all day, every day. Uh, so we had 39 all-conference players, two All-Americans. I, I wonder if we can find out. You know, I think that we can in the Almanac, assuming that this plays the same as the 21 version that I was looking at earlier. We ought to be able to see who our two All-Americans were. Uh, never had a national player of the year. Fourteen players drafted. So you know, not not too shabby. Six conference championships. I do think a lot of these were with Louisville. Five seventy eight and three oh eight. So let's take a look here. We you know we got twenty six seasons in. Five hundred seventy eight wins. I'm curious to see where that falls because I do use uh, NCAA hoops. The the not like the actual NCAA, but NCAA Hoops is a poster on the Wolverine Studios boards, and he's the one that creates this real-world mod. I use his mod. I use the one with all the coach information. So I'm interested to see where I'm going to fall in to the all-time wins as far as coaches goes. And, Agalia, if you've got uh, you got a save out there better than whatever I'm going to post up here, uh, feel free to shoot that to me in a DM. Uh, keep it low-key, though. I don't want anybody knowing. Oh, look at all the... Shaka Smart is still active almost to 900. Whoo! Man. Blaze is going to run two associations. Oh, she's a journeyman. Try not to embarrass yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's fun to, to have some different saves and experiment a little bit. It all just, as long as you're happy with what you're doing, you know, play it how you like. So let's see where we fall in here. 570. Look at all the coaches retired. Man, oh, man. So we ought to be right in here, 68th, just ahead of Leonard Hamilton, Bobby Hurley, Larry Eustachie, Andy Kennedy, Darren Horn, Bruce Pearl. We got past Bruce Pearl. Mark Pope. I don't know, I don't know if that's the Mark Pope that played at Kentucky or not. All right, so 68. In 25 seasons, to be... You know, in the top 100 even, that's not too shabby. You figure we play another 10 seasons, even at 20 wins a season, you know, we'd be uh, up in this vicinity, top 20 all time. So that's just, you know, only playing 25 seasons, 26 seasons. Uh, maybe in 21, you know, I, I don't know if I can make a run at Coach K. I think it would take like, shh, I mean, 1,200 wins. That's serious. No, we're gonna start all over, Breeze. We're not. We're not transferring this. We're gonna start all over, because um, we might want to change some things up in how we go about it. But uh, not too shabby, all time. Let's see here. Let's just bounce around this almanac for a minute. Check it out. Hmm. 
here in 2045, our simulation almost had the University of Kentucky to 3,000 wins. Now, I very vividly remember when they hit 2,000 wins because all the people around here were wearing like the 2K goofy shirts. Couldn't stand it. Uh, still hate Kentucky there, Agalia. So, um, first series you ever watched from GM Games. You know, this was this is the first series that I've ever done that went 20, 30 seasons, whatever it was. I've had a blast doing it. And like I said, I hope I hope that I can double down and, and put out even more for 21. Uh, I always tend to over-promise and under-deliver, but my intentions are good. I would like to put out a ton of content and get, get you know, 30, 35, 40 seasons in on the 21 version of it. So, UK almost hit 3,000. North Carolina was up there. Louisville up at number 8. I'd be interested to see where they start and if they made a whole lot of movement back and forth. Um, let's check out the NCAA champions. I wonder if, hold on, let's see if we can find somewhere in here. Oh, we can take a look at the Prestige. So Syracuse all the way up to 100 Prestige in this save. Villanova right there behind them, Michigan State, and then my Cardinals were at fourth. VCU at 94. Man, oh man, they've got to be the biggest movers, either them or Syracuse. I don't know where Syracuse starts out. Uh, some big time movers are ooh, the Zags on probation. Let's see who fell off. Uh, Kentucky down to eighty three. Oh my! Talk about movers and shakers. The UAB Blazers, eighty two. Well, 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 Blaze. <laughs> Your Blazers are killing it, man. Eighty two. Wow. Boise State's up here. The Catamounts of Vermont are up to a 78. Temple made a nice little run. St. Mary's checking in at 75. Uh, the Gators have fallen off quite a bit. Georgetown's fallen. UCLA's about where they started, I'd say. Duke, the biggest drop so far. <laughs> Yikes, all the way down to 69. They started like a 95. They're all the way down to a 69. Memphis at 60. The Richmond Spiders jumped up to 65. Oh, Kansas, even worse than Duke. Kansas all the way down to a 62. Yikes. That's awful. The Beaver, you look for the Oregon State Beavers. Uh... Might take a while to get to them. They usually like to hang out in the 30s and 40s, uh, unless they were big time movers. Let's see where they ended up. Oregon State. Oregon State Beavers, 33. So uh, I want to say I took them over in one save, and they were right around like 32, 34, somewhere in there. So they didn't move much at all in this save. Champions. Let's see if we can get. We'll see if this does like a count. I'd like to see. Uh, no. Not gonna get a, so much for your ego. We're not gonna get a, a count on this screen. We may be able to get it somewhere else. I wonder if it's in team records. Um, God, I, I gotta feel, I feel like Michigan State might have dominated this. Syracuse, being the last champ, probably, uh, made a big jump to their prestige. They also won it back here in 2031. Ooh, Villanova had themselves a run. Look at that. One. Four out of seven years for Nova. That's not too shabby. So, so four for Nova right there. Do they have any more recent? No. Michigan State got three. North Carolina's in here once, twice. Uh, not quite the three times a lady. Oregon got two out of three years here. Nothing else. So it looks like Villanova, during the course of this save, uh, dominated, and they did it from 2024 to 2030. Four in seven years. Quite a run for the Villanova Wildcats there. So, interesting to see. What are, as far as runner-ups, if anybody is in here too often. Syracuse a couple of times. Uh, loser Wildcats. Syracuse again. NC State back-to-back. -back. 
got shut out by Nova. Louisville was in it back here. That was long before I got there. And Michigan State had the runner-up. Zags, a couple of runner-ups here in the early years. So, interesting to see. Here we go. NCAA championships. Now, this is going to count all time. So, UCLA at 11. Obviously, that was still long before any of this happened. Uh, Kentucky still stuck at 8. So, in this save... North Carolina caught up to Kentucky at 8, and then the Villanova Wildcats sitting there at 4th all alone. They leapfrog Duke. They leapfrog Indiana. They leapfrog a whole bunch of teams in here. They would have started off with 3, so they would have been way down here, tied with Louisville for 10th, uh, jumped all the way up to 4th, ahead of Duke, ahead of Indiana, Michigan State, Florida, and UConn. But UCLA, nobody caught up to them 25, 26 years into the future. Nobody's catching the Bruins yet, and nobody's really that close. So, uh, Syracuse got into the realm of the three-time champs. Michigan State got up to five, not too shabby. So, interesting to see who won the championships, where everybody's at. Yeah, you know what? North Carolina uh, usually isn't good in my saves either, Agalia. And that's actually one of the teams, guys, uh, in the chat, Start kicking this around, ideas for 2021, because I've got a couple of schools in mind that I might want to end up at, North Carolina being one of them, specifically because they always seem to not do that well. Uh, And I thought it would be cool to kind of take them out. I've also thought UCLA or Arizona or something like that. Uh, But if you all all have ideas, I promise I will not ever be Kentucky, so don't even try that one. Uh, But if you all got ideas of things you would like to see, kind of schools you would you think it'd be interesting to either start at or end up at or, you know, uh, stop along the way and, you know, take a minute, whatever. Uh, just throw it out there. So, to ruin any team I go to. Give me a break, man. You, you see the stats. Top 100 greatest coach ever in 25 years. Give me a little bit longer. I'd have been right up at the top. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, if you got ideas, throw them out there. I'm happy to listen to it tonight. Not only... Can you throw out whatever you want to see in chat? And I'll make sure to get it on this stream. But if you got ideas for the next one, uh, I'll scroll back through. So anything I miss, uh, I can jot down notes or whatever uh, and try to get it into 2021. So let's go back and just take a look at here at our school history. Check out how we did at Louisville. And then we can kind of go back and figure it out. Let's get some season recaps here. So I came on in 2039. So, actually, that was where we won the CBI championship was my first year at Louisville. I did not remember that whatsoever. Well, Stanford West Coast, small school in Pennsylvania. Oh, competing with Villanova, that'd be rough. That would be rough. The Wildcats are no joke in here. So, with Louisville, we went to, we won the CBI in my first year, and then we got three Elite Eights, one Final Four, and then runner up this most recent season. We had a decent shot to make another run. Uh, I have to think we would have at least made the Elite Eight again. So we were we definitely had things moving here with Louisville. Uh, let's see how they did any other coaches. Eric Kuncall got him to the Final Four once. Chris Mack got him to the finals back in 2025, then couldn't get out of the second round. Looks like he got fired after going 12-19. and 19. He made a couple of Elite Eights early. All right, so that is our head coaching at Louisville. Look at that. The last four seasons ended up ranked number three, number one, number one, number three. I don't know how we end up ranked number one, uh, being that you know we get knocked out in the Final Four or Elite Eight. This has got to be in the regular season maybe, uh, but not too shabby. I mean, in the last three seasons, I didn't lose ten games combined. So uh, you tell me, Agalia. You tell me, buddy. Uh, Let's check out the player records. See if any of the guys that we brought in lead the school in any of these interesting categories. Jake Owens was one of ours, I believe. Let's see if we can do more. Instead of, like, single game, I'd rather see career points career i'm gonna look at a couple of categories like points rebounds assists i'm gonna do this at all the schools jake owens 
no, 2037, I think that was before me, right? Because I've only been here six years, so Jake Owens would have been before me. He's the all-time leader. 2,463 points. Now, Joey Shannon, yeah, I knew Joey Shannon was definitely one of mine. Chris Wright, David Williams. Andy Faulkner, I recognize. Oh, look at that, we had Jason Alexander. <laughs> That's awesome. The sneaker reps help us get the players. Yeah, that's that could have been it. It could have been it. They brought in Jake Owens, right? Sue leads in some other categories here at Louisville. I'm really interested to get back to Tulane and see who leads there, because we all know, you know, who everybody's looking for when we get to Tulane. Uh, who ended up at the, at the top? There's Lamont Map, one of our boys here on the all-time assists at number eight, still active, still would have been climbing. It was Joey Shannon jumping in, getting himself some action. Uh, a lot of the best players, though, long ago, 2031. You know, we, there's Ailes Cherry. I think he was only a, a one- or two-year player for us. I know he was short. There's Brett Porter still active, checking in at number 18. Let's see what we got rebound-wise. Number of players bribed at zero. I don't know where that – if that stat's in here somewhere, you tell me where to look because it, it's definitely zero. Unless you're talking about, like, before I show up. Before I showed up, yeah, I'm sure it was, you know, strippers and uh, whatever you call it. But since I showed up, we didn't have any of that going on. Clean this program right up. Look, Chris Wright. Way up there at the top. As far as rebounds go and then john carter and brett porter who are both still active way up there so i would definitely brought in some of the best rebounders in school history here uh i don't know let me check out the coach records see how everybody did here so chris mack still leading the way with 271 wins i was in second let's check that out by win percentage so I smoked him in win percentage. He was around 64, 65. I won over 80% of my games at Louisville. That's no joke. Yeah, the Tulane seasons were fun on, on, uh, on here. You should definitely check that out. And uh, you might want to, once you check out, maybe you should like go and watch them now and then come back and check out who actually ends up at the top for Tulane because we're, we're going to have a battle and everybody knows who it's between. Um, yeah, Auburn and Tulane, I believe, both won a championship. Uh, this isn't this isn't like one through four. This is, I think the rank over here is chronological, but the stat's over here, so that's not a true ranking. Um, let's go back. We can go back to the Almanac real quick and check out the champions. The, the Rattlers, the Snake Pit. Let's see here. Champions in the NCAA. Totally forgot to look. Yeah, there's Auburn right after I left, winning it in 2040. And there's Tulane right after I left, winning it in 2032. So, yes. <laughs> Two of the schools I coached won championships immediately after I left. That is 100% accurate. All right. So... Let's go back and let's go take a look at Auburn. Let's see here. Get down here to the SEC, our Auburn Tigers, and let's have a look at their history. Oh, we get it. What should we? What we get the first? Do it in chronological order. So first we had the Rattlers, Florida A and M, and then the Tulane Green Wave. I don't know why, I think we did shucking corn for Nebraska. And then uh, Auburn and Louisville, we just won games. That was, that was all we did. We, we calmed it down there. We just won games. I didn't have any fun, uh, whatchamacallit, for that. Uh, so, whew, Auburn had a handful of coaches here. We'll have to go in and check this out in that, in that ranked order to see who, who did it best. Let's see, who came in here? It was Jimmy Allen came in for one year, got him to number three, runner-up in the tournament, and then left. Did he, like, retire? Yeah, he might have retired. But anyway, John Kaufman comes in and steals all the glory. Had him ranked 11th, ended up winning it all. We were 
Elite Eight, Final Four, Elite Eight in our last three seasons there. So, I mean, we had it rolling at Auburn, too, guys. Make uh, no bones about it. You know, we were we were cooking there. We started off started off kind of hot, then you know had a season where we didn't even make a tournament, and then it was over after that. Five seasons. It seemed like it was a lot longer, but we were only there for five seasons. That is interesting. Let's see here. So, uh, your boy, cards, number one overall biggest winner at Auburn, one hundred and twenty seven. Kevin Willard, that's a guy with some Louisville ties, uh, coming in at no, with 90. John Kaufman with 83. Let's see how this looks by percentage. Oh, oh well, Jimmy Allen only had the one year. So, I mean, whatever. And then John Kaufman, both of them, right in my coattails. So I come in third at Auburn. But these two rode my coattails to victory. So I will take all the credit here. <laughs> let's get over here and see. Let's see points wise. Corey Gray. I know Corey Gray. That was our boy. 54 points. I remember that stream. Look at Corey Gray and Ben Deli. I don't think. Quarles may have been a guy we recruited toward the end. But I don't think he ever played for me. Look. Corey Gray's all over this list. Check this out. So over a single season, Corey Gray, 691 in 2038. Kareem Quarles did it in 2042 after we were gone. But Corey Gray has three of the top five season scoring in Auburn history 26 years in. Three of the top five. Man, what a player Corey Gray was. As far as single season, I'm not recognizing any of the other names other than Ben Deli. Let's see career-wise how this looks. So Corey Gray, all-time leading scorer in Auburn history with 2,218 points. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, Zimmerman would have been before us. We, right? Yeah, he was completely before us. Ben Deli, who was one of my boys, uh, 1,802. So pretty solid there as well. I think that Quarles might have been one of my recruits, although I don't think I coached him. Uh, Justin Logan is another game that, another name that's sort of jumping out at me. Perry Leach seems like he would have been around the right time, as does Al Whitehead. But I can't say with any certainty on those guys. Let's take a look through the other career numbers, assist wise. See if we got any, anything jump at Corey Gray. Uh, so how the guy, he's the all-time leading scorer. He's third on assists. God, man, his his usage had to be through the roof, right? Corey Gray doing it, did it all for the Auburn Tigers. Perry Leach jumping in there as well. John Alloway might have been one of our earlier players. Ben Deli showing up again. Uh, Kareem Coral showing up again. So some of the some of the all-time Auburn greats during the save. Check out these rebounding numbers real quick. So Jeremy Zimmerman led the way there. Now that I see him everywhere, I do kind of remember like coming in and taking a look at some of this back then and seeing like we had I think he was like right before I got here. But Ben Deli definitely way up there on the rebounds. 1228, not too shabby. Justin Logan. I'm pretty sure Justin Logan was a power forward I recruited. I wish I could click on these guys and pull up their player cards. Uh, but that definitely won't let me do that. But he's up there, as is John Holloway. Walter Sherrill. Uh, I don't know if I brought him in or not. Same with Tom Bright. You know, They're kind of all around the right-ish time frame, but I can't say for some. Bart Jackson, I know I recognize that name. All right, so there are some leaders with Auburn. Um... Let's let's keep the suspense going. We're not going to Tulane yet. And we're not going to Nebraska at all. I don't care. Uh, Nebraska pissed me off. So let's scroll through here and see what happened with our Florida A&M years. See if any of our guys still hold some records. Does anybody know? Oh, there we go. Mid-Eastern Athletic. The Florida A&M Rattlers, baby. Let's see. Season recaps. What these guys do. CIT. They made an NIT here. 
I made an NCAA. Two. <laughs> a lot better than they ever did with me. I only got them to one NIT. So I do not think I'm going to be having many of the coaching records here at Florida A&M at all. Yeah, come in a distant third. Massey and Phillips did some work at Florida A&M. Good for those guys. You know what? I like to feel like I did something to build the program up, but, uh, you know, whatever. Win percentage-wise, pretty dismal for me. Although, still better than Massey. Phillips, 62%. Definitely carried it. We'll take a quick look here at their player records. It's honestly, the only... And I remember we had, like, one real good score at Florida A&M. Lewis Hinton was one of mine, right? Pretty sure Hinton was one of mine. Uh, but that's in a single game. But that's the right time frame to be me. I remember we had one good score and he transferred out after like the first or second year. Eric Giles. That was him. Eric Giles right there. Still 20th in school history with 20 points in a single game. All right. So years-wise, let's see if we got anybody... Lewis Hinton. Eric Griffin was one of mine for sure. Villarreal, I mean, that's the right time frame. I do not remember him, though. I don't remember Montgomery. There's Giles, once again checking in at number 20, with 385 points in the 2021 season. Craig Montgomery transferred, too. I mean, it's definitely very possible. I do not recall. Career. Points in a career at Florida A&M. Let's see what we had. Jason Hughes in 2027. You know, just by doing the math, that has to be a guy I recruited. Right? I was there for from like 2020 to 2025, 2026, something like that. That has to be a guy I recruited. I don't know if I remember him, though. All right, let's see. See, now here's the problem. Like, Eric Griffin, if he was one of them that transferred out, he might not have got all his years in. But you know, we brought in some 1,000-point scores here for Florida A&M. You know, we'll, we'll take the credit where credit's due. Marcus Story at 2022. That's probably a player that was already here. There's Lewis Hinton checking in at number 17. Montgomery was a four-star recruit. Very possible. I talk about a lot of people, a lot of things, a lot of stuff. I forget most of it. <laughs> Just the way we roll here. All right. Assist-wise, we, we won't take too long looking at this. Eric Griffin's up there. Good to see. Reggie Watkins had to be a guy I coached. 2022. If there's anything else on these older teams y'all want to see, you know, shout it out. Khalid Knox. Did I bring in Khalid Knox? I feel like the year would have been right. I think I might have brought in the best rebounder in school history. I do think I brought him in. Right? This was one of the big recruits I was excited about right before I left, I think. Not not the last year, because I remember I got no recruits in the last year. But I think he would have been the year before that, probably. All right. So there's Florida A&M. We got the season recaps. We got the coach recaps. Let's go back and see it. Let's go back and find Tulane. In the history of Tulane, what happened? What were the records like? Oh, we'll see. What are we looking for here? Conference USA? Did I pass them already? They are Conference USA, aren't they? No, they're not. Are they not? What are the, what's, uh, what's Tulane in? The American, maybe? Oh, they're in like that AAC, right? There they are. All right, so we were with Tulane. I remember the years, so that in case we uh, don't have questions about recruits later on. So we were there 25 to 30. Five NCAA, but we we were at the NCAA's quick there. Same, about the same trajectory that we took at Louisville. So we went CBI quarterfinals, and then it was all NCAA tournament. We ended up getting to the Elite Eight once, Sweet Sixteen twice. 
Yeah, I don't use the search bar. That's <laughs> It can be your goal all you'd like, but I'm not getting there. So we had some decent years, you know, the rankings-wise. I mean, we obviously built it up, and then as soon as we left, they held it for a minute, and then uh, they've had two seasons in the last ten. So, I mean, we definitely built this program right. Let's check out these coaching records. All right, as far as wins, Chris Ogden beats me out by a hair. 186 for him, 144 for me. And then nobody else, 77 is next. <laughs> oh, Galia. Always bringing the heat. Yeah, Tulane. I knew people were going to be hyped for the Tulane review. That's why we saved it for, for close to last. This is one of the last things I can really think of to look through. But uh, we can we can look through, like, uh, all time. Like, not just the schools that I coach. We can look through the Almanac here in a minute. Uh, but if you guys have other things you want to look at, at any of the schools I was at, any of the players that I coached or recruited or anything, just anything, you or you want to go and see how your favorite team did, whatever, just shout it out. I'll go look at it. That's what we're here for tonight is stream and review. So I won about 70% of my games here. Schwartz won 85, Ogden was 68, Nelson was 72. I'm just going to take the credit for all of this. <laughs> I'm coming in fourth, third on this list, third on this list. But I'm taking all the credit. Third, third by the numbers, number one in your hearts, right? All right, let's check out the player records. And check out points in a game, and there it is right away, right out of the gate. Marquette Holmes, score one for Team Agalia. I was a Higgins guy, but Holmes still... Here we are 20 years later, and Marquette Holmes with 37, tied with Eric Davis, but still tied for the best game scoring-wise in school history with 37. He did it against Terre Haute in 2028. And I do notice, uh, I think that these opponent names over here don't work with the mod. I think these are the original school names. So just to FYI, if anybody's wondering about the opponents they did it against, I'm, I'm relatively certain. I think Jeremy Simmons actually was a guy that I recruited right before I left, and I'm pretty sure he's one of the guys that was instrumental in getting them to the championship. Um, but and look at that in a single season, Simmons. So yeah, I didn't. I don't think that I coached him. I think I would have been at Nebraska uh, for these years, but I know I recruited him 100. percent and look at three seasons over 500, and his other season he was at 490. That's a, God, four of the six best scoring seasons in Tulane history for Jeremy Simmons. Crazy. Marquette Holmes with the 10th and 11th. There's my boy, double double Higgins, BB Higgins, 448. He's down here again at 423. Uh, let's go on to the career list and see who did it. Mm. Mm. So Jeremy Simmons carries the day with 2081. But the headline, <laughs> Team Holmes beat out Team Higgins. It was close, guys. It was close. In points, Team Holmes takes home the victory. 1708 to 1602. But these two guys were the foundation for everything that we did at Tulane. Higgins and Holmes. Great little team there. We also had Chris Ledeau for a number of years, so he's right there with them. But I mean, gosh. Look at uh I mean we we had to have recruited Andrew Jones. I know we recruited Jeremy Simmons. Obviously we did Marquette Holmes. Uh, Ryan Dudley would have been the, the AI. Ladeau, uh, I think we said we came here in 2025, right? So Ladeau might have been our first big recruit. So I think we recruited five of the top six all-time scorers in Tulane history. That's not too shabby, folks. We did work for Tulane. We did work. All right, now, now Team Holmes wins there. Let's see assist-wise if anything stands out. I don't, I don't remember if we had any stellar point guards here. 
Brett Stetson, I do remember that name, and that's 29, so we may have recruited him. I am pretty sure we recruited Brian Cole, but then left before he played. But either way, Stetson was definitely a guy that I coached, if not recruited as well. He checks in at number one. One of my recruits is Brian Cole at two. Jeremy Simmons at three. Here's Holmes at five, 416. There's Andrew Jones at seven. So we brought in like five of the top seven passers in school history. B.B. Higgins, just for good measure, going to pop into the top 20 here. And rebounding at Tulane. Let's see if my man... Uh, we're going to go, you know what we're checking out last. You know what we're checking There he is. There he is. Almost 1,300 rebounds. Man, I can't wait to get to the Almanac and see it. If that, uh, you know, puts a dent in any of the all-time numbers for the save as a whole. But B.B. Higgins dominated the boards in his years at Tulane. He dominated. 1,296 rebounds. That's crazy. Simmons also... Uh, Got in there with nearly a 1,000. And then Ryan Dudley, a player that we did not bring in. Chris Ledeau's uh, there at number 7. Kevin London, I'm pretty sure we brought him in. Coming in with 687. Charles Lutz, I think, is a player we brought in, and then he helped them win their championship. He was a, a center, I believe. Let's see where it matters, folks. The double-doubles. Come on. Had to be my boy, right? Oh, my God. Oh. He made everybody else. He's a man among boys. 59 double-doubles for B.B. Higgins. I didn't even look at double-doubles for any of the other teams. I didn't think to do it. But 59. Uh, I, I'm just going straight to the Almanac and seeing who else can compete with 59 double-doubles. My word. B.B. Higgins was a beast. Jeremy Simmons with 32. That's not too shabby there. Uh. Charles Lutz, another guy that I obviously brought in. So three of the top four with double-doubles. Let's see if we got any triple-doubles out there. No, nobody. All right, so that's Tulane. Let's check out all time. And again, just shout out anything you all want to see. Uh, we've been going about 45 minutes. Uh, I'm cool to just sit here and bounce around if you guys can think of things that you want to look at, teams you want to look at, uh, whatever it may be. Oh, Look at that. Corey Gray is tied for second all time with the most points in a game. Doing work against Dayton in 2037. My word. So we go back and look at a single season. I don't know that we're going to have anybody anywhere near this. Louisville had a gallon here back in 2019. That was definitely not one of ours. Yeah, I agree, Chris. Uh, CBGM is going to have uh, – it's going to link to the pro game and just kind of play these guys' careers out. So the guys from our multiplayer league are going to jump over there and play out their pro careers. So I don't know uh, how Chris is going to put that information out there. Or if he, I assume you are because it, it's interesting. People are going to want to see it. But, uh, you know, just something for you guys to keep an eye out for, uh, keep an eye on and, and be looking at because it's going to be cool to see how they – like I would love right now to go and see how a guy like Corey Gray or B.B. Higgins, like how their pro career turned out. Uh, then we could we could settle Holmes versus Higgins once and for all. Um, so this is still single season. Okay, so this only goes down to 30. It's only keeping the top 30. None of our players crack this list. 712 is the bottom of the list. The best season at 1,040. Not too shabby. I actually was just looking at this same category on a save I'm doing in 21. And um, Duke just had a point guard that went for over 1,000 points in a single season. He actually might... I know he would have been at least second on this list. He might have been first, so um, 
I can't wait to get back to 2021, guys. I'm, I'm happy to do the wrap-up for you guys. I hope you're enjoying it. Cool little stroll here through memory lane, but uh, I can't wait to get back to 2021. I got real things going on over there. It's, it's getting crazy. I'm running a save with Xavier. Look at, oh, career-wise, oh, my God. Lawrence Shaw with 3,349 points. That's incredible. That's incredible. In four years. I mean, that's over 800 points a year. Lawrence Shaw from Michigan State. Interesting. <laughs> All right, so points in a career. Let's see if we got anybody around here. There's Jake Owens. I know I recognize the name. That I wonder if it's a guy that I tried to recruit to Auburn and missed on. Because that was before my time at, at Louisville, for sure. But the name rings out. Louisville got a couple of guys on here. Georgia Southern? Scott Johnson from Georgia Southern. Cracking the list with 2,356. So that's pretty cool. Just check out the assists. So... In 26 years, the best season anybody had was Quentin Jackson for Temple, 829 assists. Just scrolling through here to see. Brett Stetson in the top 10 all-time. So one of our boys down at Tulane in the top 10 all-time best dime droppers. Brett Stetson from the Tulane Green Wave. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? About Auburn Jamil Holmes, 2042. I do not think was that if that was one of our recruits, it would have been one of our last ones. So I don't remember him. I'm not gonna take credit for it, but maybe. Never know. Rebounds. Whoo! Fifteen hundred and nineteen rebounds from Matt Williams at Arizona. Jeremy Zimmerman, the guy that was at Auburn right before we got there, at number 10 all-time. So he was one of the all-time greats, cleaning the glass. There's your boy, B.B. Higgins, Tulane, Green Wave, 1296. 15th best all-time rebounder in college basketball in my 26 years. Uh, ben Deli also jumping into the top 25. 1,228 rebounds. So Ben Deli and B.B. Higgins, we had a couple of all-time rebounding champs. And that's all we've got for rebounds. Now, let's see where it counts. The double-doubles. All-time. Oh, he's not, he's not first. Not even close. 59 all-time. He's in the top 20. But Matt Williams for Arizona had 92 double-doubles. Oh, my word. I thought B.B. Higgins was a double-double machine. This dude did it like almost twice as much. Matt Williams, wow. I would love to see. Uh, that would be cool to have in the pro basketball game and see how a dude like that, how his pro career played out. Whew. 92. Jeremy Zimmerman at Auburn also had 64. And then, I mean, look who we're, we're, we're going against Arizona, Ohio State, Georgetown, Syracuse, Pitt, Florida, Wichita State, some of the all-time great programs. And then Tulane is going to throw their hat into the ring because we spent five or six years there. B.B. Higgins jumping in. Love it. Now let's see. Let's see if they had triple doubles. Yeah, look at this. Look, Charles Peterson from Kentucky had seven triple doubles in a college career. That's incredible. Because look, nobody else had more than two. And again, this is where I'd love to not only to be able to click on his profile because I'd love to know how he did it. Like, is this points, rebounds, assists, points, rebounds, steals? Uh, how how is he getting them? And then it'll be awesome once we get to the CBGM to see a dude like this get into that pro game and see how that career, uh, 
you know hashes out so really cool look there at some of the historical stuff let's see three pointers made in a career let's see in a game I, I can I can figure that out in a game better Ooh. oh look at Corey Gray his game against Dayton uh, so obviously he was bombing from three but he tied the all-time number 14 threes in a game for Corey Gray tied with Sarath Pengeli from UCLA Look, he also had a game of 13. Also against Dayton. <laughs> Poor Dayton. <laughs> it's just a picture of Corey Gray with a big circle and a line through it like the Ghostbusters. Like, Corey Gray is not allowed at Dayton anymore. <laughs> he terrorized them back-to-back years. Oh, man. <laughs> they must have had, like, barrels instead of baskets, and he's just out there knocking them down. Whew. Feel bad for him. Let's see. Uh, let's see like three point percentage in a career. Uh, oh, okay. See, in a game, it had everybody at a thousand percent. And I was like, well, there's no like qualifier or whatever. But it looks like for the career, there is something in there that's going to some kind of qualifier. So, best three-point shooter in the history of the save was a computer-generated player right off the bat. 2019, the very first year we played, Craig Dudley from Ball State. I don't know that we'll have... So, you know, everybody on this list, top 30 in the save, and we almost dropped below 41%, so not a... I, I don't know how that... I don't know how that checks out if you compare it to like real NCAA stats, because uh, this is suggesting that like not hardly anybody shoots over forty-one percent from three. And that might be right. I don't know. Seems a touch low, but uh, usually these stats they they check them and check them, and it's pretty true to life. So uh, it'd be interesting to see anybody want to compare this against how it really works out and get back to us later on. Uh, guys, is there anything else that you all would like to see from what happened? We've almost gone an hour here. Yeah, Corey Gray was ridiculous. Uh, is there anything else anybody would like to see from this save? Because when I close out the stream today, we are shutting the books on this save forever. Uh, it's going to be done. I'm never, I'll probably, probably never open up college basketball 2020 again it actually took a while to load today uh it's been a minute for me i've been on 21 for a while now uh, a long while but anything anything else anybody wants to see from this i feel like you know i i don't know how uh everybody else feels about it i had an absolute blast doing this stream uh it's one of the coolest things i've done and i'm having a an absolute blast. I don't know if you guys are enjoying it or not, but I'm having like a ton of fun sitting here going through these records. So whether anybody's watching or not, <laughs> I'm bouncing off the walls over here. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we could import it, but I, I know it's, it's not going to be perfect with the new teams or whatever. So um, I definitely want to get it started over. But again, I, anybody... If you have suggestions on what teams to take over in the new one or what teams to end up at or anything like that, you know, feel free to, to just shout it out. Uh, I, I can hang around in chat or on Discord or, or whatever if you all have thoughts or ideas on it. Um, I don't even know what I want to go on. I wonder if there's like his, his story. Oh! I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to go and see who our two All-Americans were. And I've got a sneaking suspicion they were probably both at Tulane. Let's see here. Award winners. Chris Thompson was an absolute beast at Gonzaga. And there's one of them, Osai Hasty from Louisville. So that was in our most, one of, not not this past year, but the one before that. And 
He was a one and done, but my word, he was a ridiculous one and done. Osai Hasty. All right, so we'll go back see where our other All American was. Oh, it was right there, Chris Russell. Back to back years, we had a second team All American. Well, that was anticlimactic. Chris Wright, and then the very next year, Osai Hasty, and those were our only two All Americans. Hmm. All right, so much for going back and looking at award winners. <laughs> What else do we have to look at? We already looked at Prestige. Conference Prestige. ACC. Dominating. Big Ten. Pack coming in. SEC dropping down. Tied with the Big East. American catching up with them quickly. What's historical standings? Oh, can we go back and look like any year? Uh, interesting. Uh oh, we got sounds like assistant coaches behind us. I think our assistant coaches are. Oh, they got something that went back upstairs. Too sad to let it go. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to turn the stream off, because then we're done. We're done when the stream goes off, guys. The the GM games, uh, inaugural college basketball, whatever, cards, inaugural Twitch stream. Uh, we made a great 26-year run of it. Sad to think what could have been. Look at look at this team. Let's see here. Who, who are we losing? We're losing D'Antonio White. Billy Guy was a walk-on, so we didn't care about him. What kind of recruit class? I mean, look who we would have been. Oh, I think John Carter was going pro. Uh, maybe somebody else was going pro. Larry Hendrick, maybe. Let's see if we still have that email. No, we don't. But anyway, let's see what the, let's see what class we would have had coming in. Nah, not amazing. You know what, I think I rushed through this class. I was trying to rush through that stream because I knew we were getting close and um, nothing amazing there. We would have had a decent team coming back, but we, I think we were losing a lot of our inside game. But anyway, guys, I think that's about going to wrap it up. Um, back to our office one last time. <clears throat> Just write it down in the history books. We went 26 years, 578 and 308. Six conference championships. Oh, we did not look. I, I want to see while I was at Louisville how many seasons uh, I won the conference championship. And I'm pretty sure I did not in 2045. I don't know if this would populate or not. So, yeah, there you go. 39. We did not in 40. And then I don't think we did in 45, although I'm not sure. We could go back and look at the last stream. Well, no, we can actually just look at the dashboard here. But anyway, five conference championships. Let's see if we won it in 45. Yeah, we did. We beat Syracuse. So, let's see here. Season recaps. This doesn't include... Does this include... That's this season, right? It's listed in 2044 as this season. And I think it was listed that in the conference list as well. So one, two, three, four. So we've been here six seasons and won the conference championship five seasons. 2040 is the only season we didn't. So not too shabby there. You know, pretty good looking record in the conference conference tournament. But um, I think that's where we shut the books, folks. 
Five seventy eight and three oh eight twenty six years. That's the current uh, streak to beat, and we're gonna try to do it in twenty twenty one. The new version of the basketball game from Wolverine Studios and Draft Day Sports. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go pedal to the metal, see if we can pump out even more seasons, even more streams. And I'm telling you what, uh, Agalia might give me crap, but. I'm going to be backing better than ever, recruiting harder than ever, uh, building programs like crazy, and we're going to bring you some good stuff. We're going to try to be chasing. We never won the national championship on the stream. It's the only thing we didn't get to do. We still have, uh, you know, we still have that to, to try to catch and chase down when we get into 2021. And, guys, I cannot wait to bring it to you guys. Chris says he's pumped for 21. Uh, I'm about to bounce off the camera here. I'm so excited to bring y'all streaming for 2021. Uh, I'd love to be doing it already, but I, I just don't want to stream the game until it's out of first access. So uh, I hope y'all had half as much fun as I did with this stream and, and with this career and whatnot. Uh, it was absolute pleasure for me to do this once every week or so for you guys. So I uh, hope that y'all will come back and follow along with me as I start it over uh, and run it back again for 2021. Uh, but for now, we're going to say goodbye to our Louisville Cardinals April 16th, 2045. This is where we part. Uh, guys, thanks so much for stopping by tonight. Uh, appreciate y'all. Had a great time. And hopefully, hopefully, I'll see y'all next time. Yeah, we're going to print Corey Gray t-shirts and we're not going to wear them in Dayton. They will get you hit. <laughs> Take it easy, everybody.